time for our last speaker, though. This is Joanna Griffin. Uh, it could be an Arts Catalyst event without at least one artist. Um, and I know Joanna has collaborated with the Arts Catalyst in the past on um, some different projects. Um, I was looking at some of her works. Um, she's interested in, in satellites, and um, Satellite Stories was a neat project that um, I think has been going on a bit. I read your story, Satellite Songs, which I know is on the internet. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, which um, I would encourage you to Google. Um, and um, otherwise, for now, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, oh, I need to Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Joanna Griffin, and I'm going to talk about Moonbird, um, which is one of the exhibits. I don't know if you've seen. Um, um began in 2008 in Bangalore, and it, it happened because of the, the launch of Chandrayaan, the Chandrayaan uh, spacecraft. Um, moon vehicle translates as moon chariot, and the idea of moon vehicle was that it would be a kind of a vehicle through which um, other ideas about what the significance of the of the launch of Chandrayaan, Chandrayaan was. Um, I, uh, as, um, as you were saying, I, I did quite a lot of work as an artist around satellites, um, and I was asked to go to Bangalore to mentor the Moon Vehicle Project, so to help lead this project that involves an awful lot of people. So the work that's in the gallery, I think it's, it's clear, there are a lot of authors, there are a lot of voices there. And for me, that was a great way to work, because um, this, um, it, it seemed that there was a problem with space technology and with what was happening and with who, was, who had a voice and who didn't have a voice. And so uh, a sort of key motivation of the project was to find ways to include voices and to mix voices and conversations that perhaps haven't, hadn't happened before. And some of the things that, that I was involved in um, instigating through the Moon Vehicle Project is perhaps similar to some of the conversations that are happening here now. How, how do you get more um, conversation going? But I want to talk about Chandrayaan and I want to talk about the moon from the kind of grounded perspective of Bangalore, of how I learned about the moon and how I learned about Chandrayaan in Bangalore and through this, through this project. So in the, uh, the way I presented the work, and I wasn't quite sure how to present work that had spanned I mean, I was in Bangalore for about three years and I've been really not, not properly left in a way. Um, but an awful lot, an awful lot happened um, in, in this time. So how do you present work that's a, away from Bangalore and away from the people who are involved in making it in, a, in London, in the UK? And I've decided, in the way I presented it, I tried to make a connection between what we did with Moon Vehicle and the kind of criticality and visuality that was involved in that um, work with um, a film that was made in 1971 that, in which Vikram Sarabhai um, um, is, speaks about um, the philosophy of the Indian space program. And there's a bit where he's at the, at the blackboard um, talking in quite a kind of casual but energetic way about his vision for the space program. So this is 1971, and Vikram Sarabhai is really, he's talked of as the father of Indian space, the Indian space program. And um, he, he died in 71. So this film, in this film, it is just before his death, for a sudden death, and he was 52. And he's presenting his idea of a space technology program for India that would be for the people. And he's saying that one of his ideas is that he's saying with a satellite in, the, in space, we figured out how to make receivers with chicken wire. They'll cost mm -hmm. about 2,000 rupee. These can go into villages. So suddenly the people who are most um, cut off from um, well, modernization, which, was, which India was terrifically interested in at that time as a reasonably new republic, uh, people in the villages could, um, could become part of um, could be connected, and we can have television. And uh, this, this is the, the, the television screen from that film, which actually says Krishni Darshan. Krishni Darshan is the farmer's books 
It's the longest running television series in India, and uh, it's, it, was, it was meant as an instructional program for farmers. Um, but the, his idea, his vision was that um, this is an everyday space program for the people of India. It's just something that happens alongside all kinds of other activities that go on, um, like g gathering water, raising children, planting crops, and then I mean, we have uh, uh, science and space technology. And science, I guess, part of the root, the, what I've tried to understand about Chandrayaan um, through this, the Moon Vehicle Project is um, also that science has a very particular place in Indian society. The, in the Constitution states that it's the duty of every citizen to inculcate the scientific temper. So in a sense, that it, it was always a socialist program. And I was in a, a class, happened to be in a class of Hindi, and I noticed that the story of Vikram Sarabhai was one of the comprehension exercises. So he, his kind of founding philosophy is, is very much part of the psyche of India. Now, I think that um, what happened with the launch of Chandrayaan and the decision to have a moon vehicle project was that it unleashed a lot of anxiety about who space is for and what this mission was for. Because India's space program, an awful lot happened from 1971 until the present day. India has, um, is, has a very remarkable remote sensing um, program. And um, the INSAT satellites are to do with communication. But these are all, um, as being mentioned, Earth-focused satellites. And the Chandrayaan was the first um, spacecraft to go away from the Earth. And it almost uh, kind of, it sort of, it seemed that it stirred a lot of anxiety about what was happening now with the space program and who it was really for. Was it really for the people? I looked at, um, so when Moon Vehicle began, and I was an artist in residence, and this project was a kind of joint decision from various arts and humanities um, people who were trying, of course, to make links with the science and with space technology to kind of create a kind of art science link, and it was quite tricky to get this off the ground to work. Um, but, uh, no, I've lost the track. Um, I'll just start, I'll just, uh, I want to show some things from the, um, where we began with the, um, with the Moon Vehicle Project. Because in a sense, I guess the first thing that we encountered was that it was, um, well the first thing we found out was that Chandrayaan was being built in Bangalore, uh, where we were. And uh, so some of the students um, who were working with me on Moon Vehicle <coughs> went to the clean rooms to, to go and see the um, Chandrayaan spacecraft. I'm going to just read out, I wasn't allowed to go because as a foreigner, I wasn't allowed into that part of Israel, so I asked them to tell me what they'd seen when they came back. And uh, I recorded what they said. And so I'm just going to read out what they said. So Shimona said, and you can see into this room, yellowish room with all kinds of cranes and stuff on top, and Chandrayaan was in one corner of it, and the scientists, they were wearing these sort of caps and gowns and sort of working on it, and sort of assembling it together. I'm saying, oh, and how big is Chandrayaan, and what did it look like? She says, well, it didn't look impressive at all. It was just a black box. <laughs> no, I think it was very much in the initial stages of its assembly process. But I mean, is it as high as a person, or is it small, like a bag? No, no, it was higher. It's, um, it's the height of a room. See, the rocket that will take it up there is the height of this building. Um, and then Fabrice, said, well, well, wasn't it this so much? Oh, it was also mounted, so we couldn't really tell which was the mounting, which was the structure. No, the black thing was Chandrayaan. No, nothing was Chandrayaan. Are you guys talking about the outer shell? Or, ah, outer shell. Yeah, yeah, that was the height. So it may be higher as well. <laughs> um, oh, we've lost the last bit. Where is that gone? So, um, so then, uh, what do I say next? So then I'm saying, the instrument says, oh, we're very confused about the heights of Chandrayaan. And I say, you don't know what Chandrayaan looks like, do you? And she says, well, we don't know where it began. And so, <laughs> so it seemed like this was the closest we ever got to seeing Chandrayaan, but nobody really know, knew what they were seeing. And it seemed to me that there was something about this artistic project that was gonna open up something about a problem of seeing space technology, and a problem of the visuality, and a problem of not being able to know what it was you were looking at, and not being able to see a spacecraft that was in space anyway but also a problem of the imagination, because a lot of the images that we've seen so far have been very black and white, like this one. 
in space, there's this uh, un undiffused light that lights things as in a high contrasted way, and these images make a big impact on the mind and on the imagination. But what I came to be interested in was what, what the consequences of space flight are on Earth in the diffused and fuzzy light of Earth. And what I found was that the, the consequences, the effect of space technology is very hard to see, and that somehow an artistic project has a way of opening up the visuality and making visible some hidden and elusive consequences of space flight. And so my story is quite different in a sense from what, what might be got to through a kind of technological view. So uh, in a way, the project was about trying to see a spacecraft that we couldn't see. So how could we get close to it? And one way was, it turned out that Rakesh Sharma, the astronaut, was also in Bangalore, and we were able to meet him. And he, in a sense, was like a spacecraft. He orbited the Earth. And so he had this kind of sort of beautiful space that he could tell us about and give us a kind of imagination about what that was like. But he also had an interesting overview of why India might be sending a spacecraft to the moon. And he talked, he said, oh, it's about India being part of the comedy of nations. If you have a spacecraft, you can be part of this elite conversation. And he said, oh, that India could have a sobering effect. It could be the voice of reason. And in a way, his, I think uh, he was interesting because he, uh, kind of had a good, over, good insight into what Israel was doing, but he was also quite a Neruvian um, idealist in thinking that, that this um, sobering influence, this moral leadership that Nehru fostered in the 50s and 60s, could, that India could perhaps be, be taking on that, that role, and I, I think that's you know, slightly problematic. But um, at the same time as we were trying to kind of get closer to the spacecraft, we also started to do workshops like this one where children were painting onto the moon in very anarchic ways. And because we were starting to be interested in the moon and Chandrayaan, we had a way to speak to people who were working on the mission of, of uh, uh, who, who, were, who were working on the mission. So this trying to see Chandrayaan, trying to get closer to the technologists, to the scientists, and trying to form a kind of mixed community of conversation was our first priority. So some of the events that we started to do um, at the beginning of the project were about bringing people together. This was called 100 Days of Chandrayaan, and it took place on the 100th day after the launch. And it was really to open up the project to the community of Shrishti. But on this day also, all the mission teams were meeting in Bangalore to share their initial data. So we sent an email to them to invite them to come. Nobody could because they were busy, but they put the invitation up on a PowerPoint during the meeting. So there was this kind of beginning to have a correspondence, beginning to get inside the kind of mission team um, world. And then because of, um, because of these conversations, then we started to meet scientists and make friends. And, uh, and sort of share knowledge. This was another event. This happened on the rooftop of the Technology Museum. And we, um, we had a telescope pointed at the full moon and then projected it, um, projected the moon image onto the ground and sat around it. Very much as has happened here, I think, with, with some of the conversations. And Sharma came, she worked uh, on the Kix instrument, the X-ray instrument, and she came with her daughter and her father. And she, she shared some stories about that. And other people shared songs, the Chandra Mama song, and <laughs> different languages about the moon um, took place. So there was a way in which the spacecraft was bringing us nearer to the moon. And one of the things Shana said was that the moon is different for us now when we look at it and we know that our spacecraft is there. And, um, and I, there was a great sense. That, that we all had, that the people who were working on the mission really wanted to share their kind of closeness to, to it and closeness to the, the moon. Something else interesting happened. I've, I've put in one of the images, I've put this quote about orange glass. And there was a way that talking to people who've been working um, in space research for many years have this knowledge about the surface of the moon, have this knowledge about the, the landscapes. And Carly Peters, who was visiting, she told us about fire fountains of orange glass that formed orange beads that fell onto the moon. Um, and I was thinking about these descriptions that, for me, created Im images of the surface of the moon without the need for photographs. And I was thinking that her, um, 
her knowledge of the moon came through from data from spacecraft, and in a sense, the, the scientists gave witness to the viewpoint of the spacecraft. There started to be a kind of an unbundling of, of what um, spacecraft was and, and where its presence was, which started to be accessible, I think, through this, uh, this kind of artistic project that, that uh, had a sense of the visuality of, of space technology. And one of the most beautiful parts of the, um, of the project was working with children from Drisha, and quite a lot of their work is in the exhibition. I've written about this project, and in a sense, I kind of want to leave it to the, the children's voices in the video and in the artwork just to speak about that. But I wanted to, um, I wanted to give a sense of the unexpectedness of the effects of space technology and what, what, what might be going on with Chandrayaan by speaking a little bit about the, um, what I thought was happening with the scientists who worked on Chandrayaan. So here, um, during the Drisha project, the children visited Israel, they visited the clean room, they were given some information about it, came back, they made spacecraft, and then very nicely, um, some of the scientists came to visit them in their school to find out what it was like you know, where they lived. And uh, they're inspecting their spacecraft here. And Shama was talking and brought some rocks and was talking about the geology of the moon. And I don't have the, um, enough language. I was, I was sitting at the back here with um, Sri Kumar, who another scientist who also he didn't, wasn't speaking Tamil either, and we were chatting. And he, he looked at this group and he was saying, oh, this is wonderful. This is what it should all be about, about people having conversations and being able to decide for themselves what the moon and, and what, what these missions mean, mean for them. And, um, so something kind of, you know, this is a very organic um, project. Um, the people gravitated towards us, and I gradually realized that people gravitated towards us because they needed this artistic project to help them to communicate things that they weren't able to about, about their work. It was, um, it was a very kind of co-produced project in that sense. And he's, he contacted me a couple of weeks later and he said, well, I want to do, I've had this idea to do a public display of a, a public festival of astronomy, perhaps you can work with us. And a year later, we, um, we, we, um, Shrishti and Isro and the Astronomy Society put on a, a big festival. Well, okay, well, uh, the, I kind of, after a while, started to understand that the, the scientists who worked on Isro the, the spacecraft was a certain thing for them. They, these are drawings that the children made um, when they visited the Indian Deep Space Network. And I was asking them to do interview portraits where they would draw the technology, but also the people who worked on the technology. Because when you make a spacecraft, you, you know that the technology is distributed amongst teams of people who work on it. Um, it's, a kind, it's a huge joint effort. But when a spacecraft goes into a rocket and is launched into space, that connection with the people who make it is graphically broken. And the spacecraft becomes um, open to other interpretations and open to other kinds of imaginaries. And I, as I looked at the way that Chandrayaan was presented in public media, you could see that, that I wasn't quite brave enough to show the picture of me and Chandrayaan standing next to each other. It looked like we were kind of on a date or something. <laughs> I have this long red dress. <laughs> because Chandrayaan is, you know, about my height, it turns out. <laughs> so the Chandrayaan kind of... Big, um, so this is spacecraft fashion, yeah, yeah. a week. And um, it, 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 as, an, an, as an exhibit after, you know, the spacecraft becomes this object, this iconic object, and very easily becomes incorporated into a kind of state iconography. These are press photographs of the first time a model of Chandrayaan was shown, this little model here, and the directors of Israel are holding it. But in the background, see, Chandrayaan's kind of ugly, like it's not that, um, it, it's, you know, it's smartly dressed, but it's, it's an odd shape. <laughs> so behind these directors are the images of the PSLV. What's the PSLV? The PSLV is the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, which, um, can, which means that India can launch um, a satellite. And in 1999, Kasturi Rangan, the chairman, announced that now India has the capability to send a spacecraft to the moon. Mm, he didn't name Chandrayaan then, but he named the capability of this rocket. And so there's a, as you kind of start to unwind what Chandrayaan is and what its purpose is and how it comes to have different purposes for different, from different viewpoints and for different people, you start to see how um, also an, an artistic 
project could also intervene and perhaps shift what the imaginary of a spacecraft could be, and that's part of what's, uh, what's interesting.